videos about the development of major blood vessels. So in this video, I will be talking about the key steps in the development of aortic arches. So as I told, during the fourth and fifth week of development, there will be formation of pharyngeal arches, the cranial part of the foregut, that is the endodermic tube, the cranial part, will give rise to the structures related to pharynx, larynx, and also part of the face and neck development. So, as I told earlier in my video, these pharyngeal arches have their own uh, cranial nerve supply and also the arteries. Okay, so these arteries which supply the pharyngeal arches are called as aortic arches. Okay, so these arise from the aortic sac. So, where is the aortic sac? So, aortic sac is the most distal part of the truncus arteriosus. I had told in the development of the heart that there is bulbous cordis which is divided as distal one third, middle one third and proximal one third. Distal one third is a truncus arteriosus which is in connection with the aorta. So that forms the aortic sac. The distal most part of the truncus arteriosus forms the aortic sac which give rise to the branches which mainly uh, enter the mesenchymal core of the pharyngeal arches. So these are called as aortic arches. So they arise from the aortic sac and they pass through the pharyngeal arches and they terminate in the right and left dorsal aorta. Initially in the fetal life, that is during fifth week, the dorsal aorta will be two, right and left. So along the uh, pharyngeal arches region, there is two aorta, right and left dorsal aorta. And caudal to the pharyngeal arches, this dorsal aorta will fuse and they form a single aorta. Okay, so these aortic arches, which are arising from the aortic, aortic sac, they pass through the pharyngeal arches and they terminate in the right and left dorsal aorta. So the primitive aorta is the first arteries to appear in the embryo. So the right and left primitive aorta continues with the two endocardial heart tubes. And once the folding occurs, these heart tubes will fuse and even the aorta fuse to form the aortic sac. And these aortic sac will be having two horns, that is the right and left horn. And these horns will give rise to the branches which are called as aortic arches. So each primitive aorta consists of ventral aorta lying ventral to the developing gut. Then the arched portion which gives rise to the uh, aortic arches which enter the pharyngeal arches and they terminate in the dorsal aorta. The unfused part will have two horns, right and left horns. So here you can see these are the two endocardial heart tubes. These are connecting, connected to the ventral aorta. So the small part of the ventral aorta will fuse to form the aortic sac. This is the truncus arteriosus. So truncus arteriosus is in continuity with the aortic sac. These are the two horns, the right and small one, the right and left horn of the aortic sac and then they form the arches. So these pharyngeal arches along with their arteries are not formed simultaneously. They are formed one by one. So first there will be formation of the first, then second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. All the six arches will give rise to uh, some structures, a particular structure, except the fifth arch along with their artery and the nerve, they regress. Okay, so finally there will be first arch, second arch, third arch, fourth and sixth arch will remain and give rise to different structures. So successive six arterial arches appear from the aortic sac and terminate to the right and left dorsal aorta by passing through the pharyngeal arches. So the, these major arteries of the head and neck of the thorax and of the thorax are derived from these arches. So you can see this is the developing foregut having the arches okay on either side and these are the aortic arches which are arising from the ventral aorta and terminating in the dorsal aorta okay right and left okay so each arch will give rise to different arteries each aortic arches so among that the first second will regress and they remain has a smaller uh, arterial branch so the first will the first aortic arch once they appear they regress and the remain they remain has the maxillary artery a small branch 
or which supplies the head region head and neck region and the second artery also regress and a small part remain as hyoid and stapedial arteries so there is no much contribution from the first and second so the connection to the aortic sac the major blood vessels are formed mainly from third fourth and sixth aortic arch so third fourth and sixth will be larger and they give rise to the major blood vessels and they are in connection with the ventral aorta and also to the dorsal aorta. So here what happens, all the first, second and fifth will regress. So the third aortic arch which is represented in pinkish color, okay. So the third aortic arch will give rise to common carotid artery and also the first part of internal carotid artery. So the third aortic arch which is in connection with the aortic sac, they give rise to common carotid artery right and left and also a part of internal carotid artery. Internal carotid artery is also formed from the dorsal aorta. So internal carotid artery have contribution from both, partly from the third aortic arch and also from the dorsal aorta which is lying above this third aortic. So they also form the internal carotid artery. The external carotid artery is formed due to the sprouting. As I told, the uh, circulatory system, they form through vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. So there will be sprouting of a blood vessels which will get connected to the third aortic arch. So that sprouting of the vessel will form the external carotid artery. So now we will concentrate only on the aortic arches. So third aortic arch on both the sides will give rise to common carotid and a part of internal carotid artery. Then the dorsal iota on the right side, you can see here. So the dorsal iota on the right side, just below the third aortic arch, they disappear. So you can see here, it has, here it is one in one color and here it has been shown in white. That means it disappears. So the dorsal iota below the third aortic arch on the right side disappear and also the dorsal iota part between the third and fourth which, which you can see here between the third and fourth also disappear on the left side okay so the dorsal iota on the right side disappears from the third aortic arch and till the end okay and on the left side it remains except between the third and fourth aortic arch it disappears this is the dorsal iota then Coming to the fourth aortic arch, as they develop, they have difference in the development. So the left side of the fourth aortic arch will give rise to the arch of aorta. So the left aortic arch will give rise to arch of aorta and the right side fourth aortic arch along with the intersegmental artery. There are some arteries, branches of arteries coming from the each segments in the thoracic and the neck region. In that, the seventh cervical intersegmental artery on the right side, the right seventh intersegmental artery along with the right fourth aortic arch, they form the right subclavian artery. So the right seventh intersegmental artery and the right fourth aortic arch will give rise to right subclavian artery and the left fourth aortic arch give rise to arch of aorta. The left subclavian artery arises from left seventh cervical intersegmental artery. So it's mentioned here. Seventh cervical intersegmental artery forms the left subclavian artery, but fourth aortic arch will give rise to ascending aorta. Now coming to the sixth aortic arch, as you can see, the third and fourth will be in connection to the ventral aorta uh, on the ventral aspect. So by this time, the truncus arteriosus has formed a septum and they have divided into uh, aorta and the pulmonary trunk. So third and fourth aortic arch will be more towards the ventral aspect and the sixth aortic arch will be more towards the dorsal aspect. So the sixth aortic arch will form the pulmonary arteries, the right and left pulmonary arteries and they get connected to the pulmonary trunk which arises from the truncus arteriosus. So among that sixth aortic arch, the part of the arch, so here is the developing lung bud, okay, as I told, 
there will be diverticulum respiratory diverticulum from the endodermal ventral wall of the endoderm of the foregut so this here is the developing lung bud between the developing lung bud and the part of the sixth aortic arch getting connected to the dorsal aorta on the right side they disappear so here you can see on the right side the part between the uh, dorsal aorta and the developing lung bud so that part on the right side disappear and the part on the left side will remain in the fetal life to form ductus arteriosus. I have told in the fetal circulation, ductus arteriosus is a small duct which connects the pulmonary trunk that is the left pulmonary artery directly to the descending iota. So the left side dorsal iota forms a descending iota. So this part on the left side between the developing lung bud and the dorsal iota so this part of the sixth aortic arch will form the ductus arteriosus which connects the left pulmonary artery with the descending iota in the fetal life so summarize third aortic arch develops into common carotid artery and also part of internal carotid artery fourth aortic arch develops on the left side into arch of iota on the right side along with the seventh cervical intersegmental artery they form right subclavian artery Sixth aortic arch will form the left and right pulmonary arteries and a part on the left side ductus arteriosus. It is a portion of left sixth arch that lies between the developing lung bar and the dorsal iota. They form the ductus arteriosus but on the right side the same part disappears. Then the ascending iota and the pulmonary trunk as I told earlier it develops from the truncus arteriosus. Arch of iota arises from left fourth arch artery and also it is contributed from the ventral part of the aortic sac and the left horn of the aortic sac. I had told in the earlier picture that this is the aortic sac. It has two horns, right and left horn, which is in connection with the aortic arches. So the left horn of the aortic sac, ventral part of the aortic sac along with the fourth aortic arch, they form the arch of aorta. The descending iota is formed from the left dorsal iota below the attachment of fourth arch artery. So below the attachment of fourth arch artery. So on the left side it forms the dorsal, the descending iota. Then the brachiocephalic artery as you, as you know the branches of the arch of iota is brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid and left subclavian. This brachiocephalic trunk or brachiocephalic artery then divides into right subclavian and right common carotid. So brachiocephalic artery arises from right horn of the aortic sac. Left horn contributes to the arch of iota uh, but right horn of the aortic sac forms the brachiocephalic trunk. Then the subclavian artery right one arises from the right fourth aortic arch and along with the right seventh cervical intersegmental artery. But the left one is from the left 7th, only from left 7th cervical intersegmental artery because here left 4th aortic arch contributes to the arch of iota. Then common carotid artery arises from 3rd arch artery. So this is about the development of major arteries. So this is my reference, the Langman Medical Embryology. So this completes the development of cardiovascular system. Thank you.